What up, what up, it's Dane. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you how to lose belly fat in just one week. Okay, so as you can see, I know a thing or two when it comes to losing body fat. I've been about 15% plus body fat and I've dropped all the way about 89% body fat, like a model almost. So really getting low to low body fat, I know how to do it. I've got experience and let me help you. Okay, just before we get into the video, I have to tell you one thing. In the top five videos on the first page, when you, when you search on YouTube, how to lose belly fat in one week, there's over 22.8 million views combined. So all those people think losing belly fat is drinking lemon juice and drinking eight glasses of water per day. That's what they think it is. And if you do too, please watch this video. One, lemon water. Proven greatly effective in cleansing your system, this detox drink can burn fat around your belly more effectively. Drink it first thing in the morning. That you can get a flat belly in as little as a week in the morning. After getting up from the bed as well as some other times to cleanse your body as well to kickstart the weight loss process. Okay, there are four things that I'm going to be talking about. It's number one, cardio. Number two, weight training. Number three, diet. And number four, you'll see later on in the video. So if lemon juice was such a special solution, why is there obese people and overweight people in the world, right? Why can't they just drink lemon juice? Because it all comes down to the few things what I'm gonna tell you in this video. Okay, let's start off with cardio. Okay, so we basically have two types of cardio, right? two main types. We have low intensity and high intensity. Okay, so the cons of low intensity training is, is boring and it's quite hard to burn a lot of calories in a long duration of time. The pros are, it's very very easy and it's very low impact meaning it won't affect your recovery in a weight training so probably the best type of low intensity cardio is walking my recommendation for you is just to track how many steps you do per day probably minimum about 10,000 steps and then slowly ramp that up so for the cons of hit is high intensity interval training we have just the two main ones first of all it's more strenuous so if you don't like cardio don't worry about it you don't need to do this one and second, it's more impact. So especially if you do sprint stuff like this, a lot more impact and a lot more risk of injury. So the pros of it, however, are it's way more time efficient and you burn a lot less calories in a shorter space of time, especially after the workout, which is known as excessive post-oxygen consumption epoch. So that's essentially everything you need to know about cardio. The low intensity is not better than a high intensity and vice versa. Just pick which one you like and one thing I have to mention as well is you can do the low intensity training a lot more frequently as there's less impact compared to the high intensity interval training. It requires a lot more effort, a lot more energy. So let's move on to weight training. Okay, so let's face it, the holy grail is building muscle and losing fat. So in order to do this, you need to do a few things. Reduce the training frequency, which means how often you train. Increase or at least maintain the weight on the bar which is the progressive tension overload, also known as the intensity. And most importantly, maintain the strength on the compound exercises. And these are the harder ones like pull-ups, dips, bench press, squat. So essentially you just wanna reduce the amount of times you train per week and just really focus on maintaining your strength in order to keep your muscle mass. So if your goal is to get toned, essentially what you wanna do is decrease your body fat percentage and increase your muscle mass. Light weights with high reps, which most people will tell you what to do, without actually maintaining the weight on the bar and if it decreases quite fast, that actually means muscle loss in most cases. You wanna train about three to four times per week, do about six to eight sets per muscle group, especially the bigger muscle groups need higher volume than the small muscle groups and maybe do about six to eight reps for each exercise, especially on the compound exercises, you really wanna try and maintain your strength. So the main focus is just to maintain the weight on the bar and just get the minimum amount of volume Therefore, you can just maintain your strength, keep your muscle mass while still losing fat. So one thing you have to realize is that when you diet, your recovery does get impaired due to the insufficient amount of calories coming from a calorie deficit, which I'll get into next. But let's jump into diet, probably one of the most important parts, in fact, probably is when it comes to losing body fat and losing that belly fat instead of that lemon juice. So the biggest thing when it comes to diet is a calorie deficit and a calorie deficit equals a loss in body fat. So a bigger calorie deficit, means bigger fat loss, faster fat loss. So more fat loss coming from the larger calorie deficit means you need to have a higher protein intake. However, in most cases, people don't. So a big calorie deficit actually leads to 
better likelihood of losing more muscle mass. The regular fat loss, the regular calorie deficit actually gives you a lot of slower fat loss. However, you're not as likely to lose muscle mass at this approach. Before I tell you how to calculate your calorie deficit and how many calories you should eat per day, just bear me one sec, I'll tell you more about protein, which is probably the second most important thing when it comes to losing body fat and maintaining muscle. So your protein intake should be about 0.8 grams per pound of body weight to about 1.2. Meaning, say if I wanted to take a measurement of say one gram, I'd do one times 200 because I weigh 200 pounds, meaning 200 grams of protein. Protein is way more satisfying than carbohydrates and fats. An example of protein sources would be chicken, tuna, white fish, turkey, eggs. Okay, so let me tell you how to actually calculate your calories. Now, one thing I have to mention just before you click off this video, you do not need to count your calories to lose body fat. So in order to do this, for males you do 15 times your body weight in pounds and for females you do 15 times your body weight in pounds that rough estimate will be your calorie maintenance so now we have that number if you want to do aggressive fat loss minus that number by a thousand and if you want to do regular fat loss minus that number by 500 okay like i said just a few seconds ago you do not need to count your calories so here are some foods that you can consume that are low in calories and will provide more satiety so as you may already know vegetables are very low in calories fruits, lean sources of protein, and water-rich carbohydrates. These are potatoes, also sweet potatoes as well, legumes and oats. Okay, so let me give you some pro tips when it comes to dieting. First of all, avoid any exposure to junk food. Second is avoid palatable foods, like all those junk foods that everyone really enjoys. The properties of the palatable foods would be high in carbohydrates, high in fat, low in protein, and low in fiber. A bland diet does actually prevent overeating. One thing I have to say though, there is no best diet. As long as you create a calorie deficit, that's the most important. Okay, so this pyramid here actually outlines the most important factors when it comes to dieting. And please notice, there is no such thing as lemon juice and drinking eight liters or glasses of water per day. Okay, so let's move on to direct ab training, which everyone wants to know because they want bigger, better abs. So essentially to get bigger abs, you need to increase their weight over a period of time as well as the volume load. The volume load is basically your sets times your reps times your weight. But just for this example, let's just use the sets. As a baseline, you can do about eight to 12 reps and about three sets per exercise. Okay, so here are some exercises that you can do in order to get bigger abs. Number one is rope crunches. And when you do this, make sure you, don't, you do not move from your hip. You just wanna move your upper part of the body to your hips. Number two is leg raises, and these are quite straightforward. Just really prevent the momentum when you try and do these. And if you're a beginner, you can also do knee raises as there's not much leverage, and therefore it's not as hard for you. And number three, the last one is dumbbell side bends. These will hit the external obliques. And when you do this, you just wanna move from your waist. You do not wanna move your whole body down. One thing I have to mention, and this is so important, without a great diet, you will not see your abs at all. You do need to lose that body fat. And remember, it's a calorie deficit that does this. Or some videos will say lemon juice. As I like to say, your abs are made in the gym and they are displayed in the kitchen. Okay, let's summarize all of this. Number one, pick the cardio that you'd like to do. It all just comes down to the amount of calories burned per session or burn per day when it comes to losing body fat. So for the weight training, you really wanna maintain the weight on a bar. And if you're a beginner, you can even increase the weight on a bar. Of course, if you can increase it, then increase it. Strength basically correlates with muscle in most cases because volume also does play a part. Okay, a typical baseline that would give more people is just do six to eight sets per week per muscle group, train about three to four times per week and stick into a rep range of about six to eight, especially for the compound exercises. So the main important part when it comes to diet, when it comes to losing belly fat, in this one week, in a real short space of time, you need to create a calorie deficit. The bigger the calorie deficit, the more aggressive, the faster the fat loss, the more protein is required. So for the regular fat loss, the regular approach, your protein requirements will not be as high and the fat loss will not also be as fast. So to get bigger abs, you need to train with weight, you need to increase weight over time and increase the volume load as well. Okay, so that's literally all you need to know when it comes to losing belly fat. So my request for you is just to watch this video 100 times over. Just joking, of course. No, but seriously, the favor is pretty small. In fact, you could choose between two options. So you can either share or like the video 
Or if you want to do both, that's even better. So if you thought this video was interesting and helpful, you could help me out tremendously. So number one is just by sharing the video, you can have others around the world know that lemon juice is not the way to lose belly fat. And lastly, subscribe to the channel just to stay updated with the latest informative videos in order to lose belly fat and build more muscle. So that's it. That's how you lose belly fat the real way. Screw the lemon juice, screw drinking eight glasses of water per day. Doesn't even make sense. So that's it. Stay positive, stay smiling. Let's get this. I'll see you in the next one.